On the night of January the 10th, 2000, David Sarita was visited by three angelic beings of light who taught him a revolutionary vortex wave frequency model called the Galaxy Clock, which could mathematically prove faster than light energies and higher vortex dimensional states of matter, where communications and spacecraft could travel faster than the speed of light. Months later, when David Sarita was analyzing NASA UFO tapes from the space shuttle mission STS-75, dated February 1996, we could see luminous circular UFOs pulsing with energy waves surrounding a 12-mile-long, quarter-mile-wide, ionized magnetic field tethered satellite. At this exact moment in time, the NASA space shuttle was traveling in the space above northwest Africa and right over the pyramids of Egypt. Zooming in and slowing down on the footage, frame by frame, we could see the waveforms for the first time. A perfect vortex spiral radiating out of the mini black hole in the center of the luminous UFO. Were the UFOs utilizing mini black hole vortex waveforms for their propulsion systems? Were they capable of opening a mini black hole for faster than light travel? Months later, in July 2006, a crop circle across from Stonehenge, England, appeared with an identical vortex spiral. Could the balls of light witnessed creating crop circles be the same balls of light that were visiting the NASA astronauts in space, and the same beings of light who appeared to David Sarita in the year 2000? Are the crop circle vortex geometries the same teachings as those found in the galaxy clock? After David Sarita's galaxy clock, vortex math theory had millions of views in the year 2001 on the internet and video sites around the world. Within a few years, vortex math swept the world and new people were having amazing insights into the same phenomena. Within a few years, David Sarita and many other electrical engineers were secretly making vortex coils. Now there are videos all over YouTube showing the results of years of research and the amazing effects of vortex coil power. Now everyone who had some wire and knows how to make a coil is doing it. There is a revolution going on right under our noses that could change the world. Some of these vortex coils are producing the highest ever recorded revolutions per minute with spinning magnets of all time. Russ Grease is passing over 570,000 revolutions per minute at the center of his toroidal vortex coil with very little power. There are no stable electric motors that spin that fast today. Considering jet fuel powered engines can go faster than the speed of sound on less than 10,000 RPMs, what would happen if engineers made electric coils a lot bigger and put more power into them? Could we see jet electric engines in the future with even faster jet engines capable of electric forced air vertical lift? David Sarita believes we are seeing the beginning of the effects of vortex math coils. He believes they may hold the secret to nuclear fusion energy and true anti-gravity and zero-point energy. In the late 1980s, MIT physicist Dr. Bogdan Maglich was aspiring to create clean fusion energy with a vortex spiral magnetic field. He was injecting deuterium and helium-3 fuel in a chamber where a flower of life vortex magnetic field ignited the fuel to the highest temperatures in any nuclear fusion device, reaching 10 billion degree ion temperatures, far hotter than the sun's 27 million degrees. Maglish only needed a billion degrees to fuse non-radioactive helium-3 fuel. According to U.S. Air Force studies on his designs, one cubic meter of reaction space could produce a billion watts of continuous power. His vortex magnetic field was the missing secret to clean fusion power. The U.S. government conspired against him and blocked all further funding into his technology. While funding for vortex coils and nuclear fusion remains sparse, there is a lot more that can be done with vortex coil designs. In electronics, you have sine waves, which are rounded, circular, and smooth, and sharp angle waves, 
such as triangle waves, square waves, sawtooth waves, and then more rounded figure eight scalar waves and standing circular waves. Nikola Tesla discovered that when the path that electrons flow through in a wire is curved, the centrifugal force of spin converts electricity, E, electrons as mass, into light energy as electromagnetic fields, and thus radio waves traveling at the speed of light, radiating off the coils, are born. In the vortex of that spin, 90 degrees from the angle of the wire, a magnetic field is born. Electromagnets are made by spinning a wire around a steel or rare earth metal core. The more windings, the stronger the magnetic field. Square windings produce sharper angles and thus stronger centrifugal action on the corners producing a stronger output field. You can see this signal test with an LED light that sine waves produce less light than a square wave for the same energy input and output. This simple test led David Sarita to believe the Great Pyramid of Egypt was a giant semiconductive square wave oscillator. With its stepped ledges all the way up, it is the perfect base for a Tesla square wave vortex coil. But even if the pyramids did not use a coil, the semiconductor properties of the three types of stone materials used produce oscillations. With oscillations, we can calculate the frequencies based on the pyramid's shape and its measurements. That is because electrons get activated on the surface of semiconductive stone, and when they reach a certain level of activity, they produce an electromagnetic speed of light oscillation just at the surface and beyond. This causes the pyramids to create a square wave vortex energy field. The question is, why would ancient Egyptians want to build such a massive square wave oscillator, spinning countless billions more electrons than a small oscillator? Could it be to open a stargate where persons could travel to other star systems and planets? What if David Sarita could mathematically prove that the Great Pyramid of Egypt was designed by someone who intended it to be a giant semiconductive crystal oscillator capable of sending signals faster than the speed of light to other star systems? What if an oscillator this size could open up stargates and send UFOs to other dimensions? Today we make tiny crystal oscillators to tune cell phone signals, computer, radio, satellite and TV signals. These tiny oscillators are so effective at telecommunication they allow us to span the globe in less than a second. What if we made a huge oscillator the size of the pyramids today? Would it be the secret to opening up wormholes to faster than light speed travel? If the Great Pyramid were a crystal oscillator in the ancient past, its frequency would prove it to be true or false. The frequency of an electromagnetic wave is determined by taking the wavelength divided by the speed of light. David Sarita took the square wavelength of the Great Pyramid capstone base, resolved in Egyptian inches, and divided it into the speed of light in Egyptian inches, and got an astounding number, 5.151 megahertz. The slope angle of the Great Pyramid was originally 51 degrees and 51 minutes. How did the builder know the frequency of the capstone would produce the same number? The builder must have known the speed of light to design it with these dimensions. We did not know the speed of light precisely until 1972. So how could an ancient stone builder know the speed of light? That would be impossible. Only an advanced civilization with modern technology could know the speed of light. Does this prove for the first time that the pyramid was built by a star civilization? David Sarita recalculated the length of Moses' Ark of the Covenant using the most common measurement in the Great Pyramid, which is two royal cubits, equivalent to 41.21 Egyptian inches. Half of this would be a true cubit, equaling 20.605 Egyptian inches. God said make the Ark of the Covenant two and a half cubits long. So 20.605 times two and a half equals an astounding 51.51 .51 Egyptian inches long. 
the same number as the frequency of the Great Pyramid and its slope angle. Does this prove Moses' Ark belonged to the Great Pyramid? Who was Moses really in contact with? Was his God an ancient Egyptian deity? Was the Ark of the Covenant stolen by Moses and the Egyptian armies followed him not to recover Hebrew slaves, but rather the Ark itself? What if this new math could prove the same people who designed the megalithic structures of Stonehenge knew the same frequency that the Great Pyramid oscillated at? The answer is in the position Stonehenge is sitting at 51 degrees and one minute north latitude. And the angle between Stonehenge and Magnetic North equals nearly 51 degrees and 51 minutes, the same number. Why are most of the crop circles in England appearing inside of the 51 to 52 degree line? Why is Rosslyn Chapel sitting at precisely 55 degrees and 51 minutes north latitude? Why does the Greek number for a stringed instrument called a kithara, which became the sitara, or guitar and harp, equal 51 in Greek gematria, numerical value? Why did a British TV station, ITN, get hijacked by an extraterrestrial signal in 1977 at 5.10 p.m.? And the TV station transmitter was sitting at 51 degrees and 1 minute north latitude. Why does the formula to resolve a closed circle, 3.14, multiplied by 0.5151 equal the golden ratio, 1.618? of an open spiral circle. What is the mathematical Jesus connection to the Great Pyramid? What is the meaning of this most sacred frequency and number? The human nervous system is an electrical energy system which has measurable millivolts on the fingers or any part of the body. What David Sarita discovered is that the bonds of a crystal lattice can trap vibrational information as memory the same way a carrier wave can transmit music or voices and pictures. At this point, it is easier to hold vibrational energy memory than actual data in a crystal. Once you get a vibrational memory stored in a crystal lattice, when a person holds it, they become part of the circuit and can experience a shift of vibration in their own electrical nervous system. To start, David Sarita built a technology to imprint crystal pendants wound as toroidal biotransformers with harmonic codes and the NASA recording of our sun's vibration. On the fingers, we can see a local nerve signal improves dramatically before and after full left-right contact with one of our pendants. This increase of energy is upwards and over 100 millivolts. Using aura cameras before and after, we can see immediate beneficial increases in light emanating from the body and more balanced energy centers in the body. Many people who wear these report increased telepathy, healing, and more balanced energy. It is amazing how well the body responds to harmonized, charged crystal. If we consider that the first tiny crystal transistors invented in 1947 allowed radio signal reception to improve on the same energy level as the human nervous system, on the millivolt scale, which led to the multi-crystal transistors used in cell phone and computers today, it is no wonder that crystals would have a profound impact on the human energy system. After all, vegetables absorb liquid crystal in the form of silica and germanium from the soil. When we eat those plants, we store that crystal in various glands, energy centers, and our bones. When crystal in our body bonds with trace minerals, we get bio-oscillations of frequencies right within the body. The body then becomes a transmitter-receiver because of these crystalline materials. We can prove that the nervous system transmits radio waves very easily. We can see with this simple signal test, transmitting the 5.151 MHz signal of the Great Pyramid into the body, that we could measure the frequencies radiating off the body at a distance with a tri-field meter in radio wave mode. This proves that our nervous system 
is an active transmitter receiver. We can also see improvement in radio signal reception by holding our hand near an antenna at nighttime. Arizona Senate Democrats please that President Barack Obama will be in Phoenix next week to speak about the economic stimulus plan. Fortunately, we can come in contact with natural electromagnetic fields such as the sun, rocks, earth, and the stars, or we can come into contact with man-made disharmonic field pollution. Whether we know it or not, our brains and nervous systems are under attack from unwanted cell phone, internet, extensive neighborhood Wi-Fi signals, microwave towers, smart meters, over a thousand global transmitting satellites, TV signals, and home 60 hertz electrical EMF pollution. Do you find it difficult to sleep, meditate, think creatively, or have problems holding a focus? Nobel Prize winner Luc Montagne proved that human DNA transmits and receives these frequencies all day long. It is a walking, talking antenna broadcaster receiver. The human nervous system, heart, and brain are a synchronized, naturally harmonic electrical system that can be naturally tuned to various states of consciousness, from sleep, meditation, music, silence, creative insights, and inner development of genius potential. All of this gets disrupted by disharmonic EMF pollution. Nature uses balanced, harmonic EMF vibrations that emanate from the sun, earth, planets, all living things, the stars, and the cosmos. At Lightstream Technologies, we have studied the secret hidden mathematical codes of natural EMF vibrations and recorded them into audio files. At Lightstream Technologies, we have developed the answer to disharmonic field pollution. We build and sell transmitters that pulse natural harmonic vibrations back into your body, nervous system, home, workplace, or environment to restore nature's balance. At Lightstream Technologies, we use mathematically decoded frequencies of the Earth, the Sun, the nine planets, plants, flowers, the golden ratio, infinities, the great pyramid frequencies, and the frequencies of the stars to help tune you to a better state of mind and enhance your living light aura and environment. Studies done on the human aura before and after our harmonic transmitters show a comprehensive increase in vitality, light, and life force energy. To see any brochure, write David Sarita at Outlook.com.